Hey everybody, Greg here at Video Maker. We finally got the Blackmagic Cinema camera in. It's been a while, we're anxious to see what's inside. Just an important note before I open this thing, uh, this is not gonna be the retail version of this, so uh, your box that you get in the, in the mail may look a little different than ours, but uh, let's crack it open and see what we have inside. All right, first thing we have is a undetermined cable. I'm not sure what this thing does yet. I'm sure we're gonna find out. Got a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. Good for recording on. We've got a uh, Thunderbolt to HDMI or SDI uh, monitor out. Uh, this will go from the laptop to a monitor. All right, this looks pretty well sealed here. I don't know if our lights are gonna reflect off this, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the plastic off. So here we have the box, Black Magic Cinema Camera. Let's uh, dig in a little deeper here. It looks like there's probably a good and a bad way to open this, so let's try this. Oh. All right, let's see what we have. So first things first, we have this guy that has oh, so many things to open. Well, thank you for selecting our Black Magic uh, design for our work. And looks like we got some uh, software in here probably. Yep, some software, disk here, software and manual. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. DaVinci Resolve 9 comes with it. That's like a thousand dollar program by the way. So uh, this thing retails for about three grand. So the fact that there's a thousand dollar, you know, program in there to start with is a pretty good deal if you ask me. Got a bunch of these uh, power converters, it looks like. Uh, so for our needs, we probably won't need these unless we're gonna go shoot in Europe or another foreign country anytime soon. That looks like the one we'd probably use. Got the other end of the uh, power cable here, right there. So, you know, these just clip on depending on uh, what country you're in. Oh, there it is. All right, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna tease you first. Let's see, looks like a strap. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for the good stuff. Looks like this is gonna go on the back of the camera to help us uh, look at the viewfinder. And then finally, we've got the camera itself. Wow, it's actually surprisingly uh, heavy, I think. It, it's got kind of a small form factor, although now that I'm holding it in my hands, it feels a little bigger than I anticipated. But uh, very sleek, very minimalist, you know, not a whole lot going on. We've got, you know, a spot for our remote. Uh, headphones, we've got uh, you know two audio inputs, we've got an SDI out, little Thunderbolt out, and then our power input. Uh, looking at the back here, we've got just a few controls, pretty slim down. We've got an iris uh, button here and a focus button here. Uh, your traditional video playback controls here, uh, menu and power. And then on the other side, we've got our hard drive slot and a USB port there. Taking a look at the top, we've got three screw mounts on the top for various different things that you might want to use. Um, and then on the bottom, uh, you know, for mounting for a tripod, a little fan right there. And then on the front, we've just got our mounts. And let's unscrew that and see. So there it is. This is the EF mount. Uh, it does come in a micro four thirds mount, but this is the one that uh, model that we're going to test. So I'm going to go ahead and put this lens on here. Clicks right on, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. So a little history on this guy, uh, the reason we were so excited to get it is because it's been a long time coming. It was announced at NAB uh, in 2012 obviously, and then went into production late in 2012. They actually had some issues with the glass on the sensors, so they stopped production, got those issues worked out, resumed production, we got a whole series of emails explaining the process, so they were very good about, you know, keeping us in the loop, but uh, at long last, we finally got it. Uh, thing is 2.5K raw, right? So that's, that's a pretty, uh, pretty good boast for a camera that costs three grand. Um, also, um, 13 stop dynamic range. So 2.5K, 13 stop dynamic range, you're talking like most DSLRs, somewhere around the eight range. What that means is those highlights and those shadows, you're gonna be able to have them all in your picture. You know, normally you're sacrificing one for the other, 
But uh, if you use this thing, hopefully that's not going to be an issue anymore. I think even film is about 14 stops, so you're, you know, you're you're real, real close to that film feel. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what it can do, and uh, I know our reviewer is too. So we're actually going to pass this thing right off to him so he can get started and go to videomaker.com uh, in the extremely near future to read that full review and see what this baby can do.